let's just take a few minutes to talk about a very simple yet a very powerful way to increase your profits when you're investing in crypto. Okay, just to keep this very simple, let's say that you already have $1,000 in the market or you're about to put $1,000 into the market. And let's say that your first investment or your first round of investments, you put your $1,000 in and you come out multiplying that by three, which gives you $3,000 right over here. And you decide to keep going because, well, why wouldn't you? You know, maybe it's been a week, a month, two months, three months, but some time has gone by and you've turned $1,000 into $3,000. Now what we wanna do is continue to make some money. So you reinvest that $3,000 and you triple it again. And now you're up to $9,000. Now that $9,000 you reinvest and this time you do a bit better. You do a 5X, so you're up to $45,000 gross off of the $1,000. In other words, you have a 45X. You only made a 3X, a 3X, and a 5X, all of which are very obtainable during a bull market. You know, you got a lot of these people talking about so such and such crypto is going to 15X, easy, all day, 20X. This crypto is going to 25X, 30, maybe even 40X. This crypto over here, that, that's gotta be a 70X. You know, the, the truth is when you get these crazy numbers in your head, even if you end up being correct, the, the, the problem is it's really easy to get caught up in the hysteria. And, you know, a project goes to 22X and, and you were thinking that, you know, it was probably gonna 25X. Well, once it gets to a 22X, you might you might be holding on because you're thinking, oh yeah, let me, let me wait till that 24X or that 25X, then I sell, right? Well, the danger here is you might be wrong, number one. Number two, even if you're right, if you don't have your sell orders put in well in advance of it hitting that 24 or 25X where you intend to sell, other people are probably going to end up starting to dump on you meaning that the price is just going to tank. And if you're not right there, ready to sell, and I'm talking, you already put the sell order into the exchange to sell for you when it hits that price target, then there's a real good chance that you're not gonna make the profits that you think you are. But after this third round of investing, where you ended up getting your, your 45,000, now, unfortunately, it's the year end. And the unfortunate reality, is there are taxes. And let's just say that all this is short-term capital gains, so you're gonna lose 50%. Again, just to keep this really simple, really basic, really easy to follow. Because we're talking about the concept here. We're not talking about laying out a very specific roadmap for you to invest in A, then sell on such and such date, invest in B, then sell, then invest in C. We're, we're not doing that here in this video. This is just purely to get the concept across to you. All right, so let's say your first investment in the second year of the bull market, you take your $22,500 that you have left, which is now a net profit, which in turn means that you have your 22X at this point, by the way, but you reinvest it and you end up doing even better and you get a 6X. Okay, when you multiply 22,500 by six, you're talking about making a gross profit of $135,000. All right, that's that's fantastic. Now, following our previous example of 50% taxes, again, for the sake of what we're talking about, just to get the concept across, let's just say you're gonna pay 50%. You would be left with $67,500. That means that you just did a 67X and you turned $1,000 into $67,000. Do you see where the power of compounding lies? It should go without saying, but in the interest of being a bit more complete here, I'm going to point out that this will require a lot of research because you're going to want to research probably at least a few dozen crypto projects and get familiar with them. And in this regard, I'm talking about, yeah, you want to see if it's a good project, who the founders are, what kind of utility it has, but more, really more than that, you want to see like what the socials are you know, what the, what the meme is, like how popular do you think it's going to be among 
retail investors, when the euphoria really kicks in and people are just throwing their money into the market hand over fist, you're also going to want to have backup plays, right? So let's say you really like GameFi. You don't want to pick one project. You know, you want to have three, four or five projects because if the, the project that you thought was going to do really well ends up not doing very well, or maybe it pumps while your money is tied up elsewhere, you're going to want to have something to fall back on. You don't want to have to be scrambling, trying to figure out what else you can invest in because the plan you laid out is now crumbling all around you because things aren't unfolding on the time frame that you thought they would. And this also gets back to what they talk about. It's, it's about time in the market. It's not about timing the market. Even though in this example, we are flirting with timing the market, I'm talking about finding investment opportunities and jumping from one investment to the next to the next, which, yeah, that, that kind of gets into timing the market. But usually when people say, don't try to time the market, what they're actually referring to is don't try to time the top. You know, if you buy something for 75 cents and you're pretty damn sure it's going to go to $14 and let's say you're right, it goes to $14. That's fantastic. You know, if you put a sell limit order in and you put it at $14 and as soon as it hits, you sell your crypto automatically, then you, you could do very well. But the problem with this is that number one, it's extremely difficult to know what the top is going to be. You know, almost nobody gets this right. You know, there are some exceptions, but that's luck. There, there isn't really any other explanation for it. I don't care if it's Warren Buffett who decides that he's going to get into crypto. Nobody can reliably gauge where exactly a token or a coin is going to go in terms of price action or anything else. In the context of what I'm talking about, when we talk about timing the market, the danger is that if you pick five, six, seven cryptos over the course of a year, year and a half, two years, and you think, you know, first I'm going to invest in XRP because it'll probably pump a little before Bitcoin. And then I'll put my money into Bitcoin because that usually pumps early. Usually Bitcoin kind of leads the market. It's not strictly true, but mostly true. And then after Bitcoin, I'm, I'm going to reinvest into this other pro You know, If you try to plan it out that exact and you don't have anything to fall back on, anything that you have researched, anything that you have been keeping your eye on. You know, when you go from XRP to Bitcoin and then to something else, you know, if that something else already pumped when your money was tied up in XRP or when it was tied up in Bitcoin, now you're in panic mode because now you have to figure out a good investment. And that's where the stress and the emotion, that's one of the areas where the stress and the emotion can really screw you up and cost you a lot of money, either in lost profit that you could have made or worse, actually losing money as opposed to losing money that you could have made. And so the bottom line here, though, is I think after outlining this basic concept, I think pretty much anybody can draw this out in a much, much more elaborate example and you can really see what the potential here is and i'm using you know i'm using really really low examples you know 3x 3x 5x 6x you you could easily end up doing an 8x an 11x an 8x a 14x the other thing too is in this example we're talking about starting with a thousand dollars well what if you start with five thousand or ten thousand and the other thing too is Again, you're probably going to really you're going to want to diversify because if you take 100% of your money and you put it into one project and if that project either lags way behind and doesn't go up when you're expecting it to and it takes an extra several months or maybe it never really goes up at all, which would be crazy, but it could happen your whole plan just pretty much just failed. And again, you're back in panic mode. So, you know, if you have five or $10,000, I would probably think about picking five to 10 projects. Say, so let's say you have $5,000. I would recommend that you pick five to 10 projects, right? And you put $500, maybe $1,000 into each one of those. And as they pump and the, as they hit your, your targets, you know, the 2X, the 3X, the 5X or whatever it might be, you sell while all at the same time, you're constantly keeping an eye on the next phase, you know, and what projects you have laid out that you think are going to be good to invest in following 
your first investments. And you do the same thing with a batch of cryptos for the third investments. And the other thing too is a lot of cryptos, not not all cryptos, but a lot of cryptos during the bull markets, they'll run up and then they'll retrace and then they'll run up again. You know, so if there is a crypto or two that you think is going to do that and you're pretty, pretty confident that it's going to do that and you want to make that part of your plan, you know, like you invest in a crypto in the second phase and then maybe you, you reinvest in that crypto either in the third phase or the fourth phase. I mean, that, that's a possibility. I mean, that there's nothing to say that you can't or shouldn't do that. All I want to get across to you is that all of these people that you run into on YouTube, that they want to tell you, you know, invest in, you know, whatever, easy 20x all day. You know, how often do you think that those things actually play out? Not very often. All right. To, to, be, to be clear, not very often. Unfortunately, on YouTube and quite frankly, with the way the audience operates, you have to be a little bit clickbaity or at least you have to have very powerful thumbnails and titles. And one of the easier ways that people tend to to target is to make things greatly over sensationalized. Right. They want to tell you about the next 130 X gain. They want to, you know, and in some cases, it'll get the click, right? But I think in the majority of the cases, you're not going to see a 130x gain. You're not going to see a 70x gain. You're probably not going to see a 30x gain. You will in some projects, or at the very least, you will on the charts. Whether you actually realize those gains is another matter. Compounding, it's a good thing. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is a lot of people get really hung up, and I was one of them for a while. A lot of people get really hung up on trying to avoid short-term capital gains. And you know what? If you're going to hodl long-term, like if you're going to buy crypto in 2022, early 2023, and and you're intent on holding it until midway or, or further into 2025, and you want to sell once to take all of your gains, then yeah, it makes it makes sense to worry about short-term capital gains because for holding that long, you're not going to be paying short-term capital gains. Depending on where you live, you know, you're going to have to uh, do your own research on taxes. I'm not an accredited investor. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA. And quite frankly, even if I were, I can't tell you like all people across the world who may speak English and may understand what I'm saying, how taxes work where you live. That's just not realistic. All right. So you're going to have to do your own research. You're going to have to consult a qualified professional when necessary. When we're talking about a plan like this where you're compounding, you're you're pretty much guaranteed that you're going to be in the short-term capital gain realm. But let me just put it to you this way. If you turn $5,000 into $50,000 and it's not short-term capital gain, but you see another investment that you think you can do another 5X on, but it's kind of late notice, you know, it, you're not going to be holding 12 months and so you're going to be paying short-term capital gain. Well, which would you prefer, holding $50,000 and paying less taxes on the $50,000 as a percentage or having two hundred and fifty dollars or $300,000, but you know, you're going to have to pay a higher tax bracket on $200,000 of that? I mean, which would you prefer, 50% of $200,000 or 0% of $200,000? I mean, I think the answer is pretty obvious.